getting this opportunity to be a head coach, for me, just stepping into it, I didn't, you know, it's kind of overwhelming because now you're not just doing the X's and O's. You have to basically become the CEO of a, a whole franchise, the roster. Uh, the hotel room. Oh, we don't have the the the, the pedia light. <laughs> you know, it's kind of sitting there. It's like, man, this is like I'm responsible for everything. You know, literally. But yeah, I you're enjoy also it. responsible for those wins and losses. Yep. Correct. <laughs> <Yeah, school board. laughs>good to be here with these great XFL coaches, former great players, great coach and Wade yes. Phillips. But last time I was dealing with you, Hines, I was a D coordinator at Florida uh -huh. and you were the Swiss Army Knight at Georgia <laughs> playing quarterback yep, for yep. running the ball or, you know, receiver. And you beat us that last time your senior year. <laughs> well, that's a good thing, right? That's yeah. a good thing. No, not, not, not. Uh, Well, you know, for me, it's, it's just awesome just to one, have this great opportunity. What a great way to start the 2023 season off. Uh, reporting at training camp. Wade, I've been a big fan of yours. Played against you. Bob, you're like the OG. Years of experience, mm -hmm. success in college ball. Just, you know, for me, I'm a little intimidated with these guys because they, they've been in the business a long time. I know better than coach. that. <laughs> <laughs> you know, then for T. Buck and I, we're kind of – we're the savvy guys, yes, right? They always yeah. say savvy when you don't have the natural height or mm -hmm. you don't have the speed, but you find a way to get it done. Get it done. I'm just thankful for the opportunity to, to be a head coach in the XFL. And, you know, it'd be kind of weird seeing you guys on the other sideline and here we are competing. Mm -hmm. um, but I'm extremely blessed, man, and honored to be amongst you guys. Well, there's not a better competitor than <laughs> these two guys as yeah. far as on the field. So they, they're – you won't have any trouble coaching. I know that. Uh, yeah. Well, I feel the same way. I mean, I've been watching you guys uh, on TV and, and, and now to get a chance to obviously compete against you guys uh, is, is an honor too. It's also exciting. And like I was talking about being a, a head coach in the XFL, it's different and it's exciting at the same time with what we're trying to put together. So it is an honor. I don't have to worry about getting cracked back. <laughs> Blindsided. Or that's you part of the it, rules you we holding tell. all the time. No, no holding, no holding. <laughs> so that's exciting. And we talked about just seeing you and your son out at Oklahoma, Florida State. So it's, all, it's, it's always some type of connection. And I'm thankful to be playing against, coaching it, against you guys. It'd be really different for me. You guys have NFL experience. Yes. Mine's all college ball. I'm used to practicing with 130 guys. Yes, that's true. <laughs> yeah, so, you got that right. So it's, it's, it's a little bit different, the timing of it all and the, how few of players you get to work with. So I'm at a little disadvantage right there. So, Nothing uh, personal, but I'm glad. Yeah. <laughs> Nothing personal. I, I don't think you guys are going to give me any help no, either. No, 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 no. Well, speaking of help, no. I mean, I figured since I got you guys here on the spot and you guys have been in the coaching business, what advice can you give first-year head coaches? The one little nugget that we can take, not giving us the, the, you know, the playbook and stuff like that, but, you know, over the years, your experience, what advice would you give first-year head coaches? I always encourage guys coming into coaching that have played to use yourself. Uh, players, uh, you know, I had to convince them that I knew what I was doing, but I didn't play. They're convinced when you say something, this is the way to do it. Gotcha. So take that opportunity. Yeah. Go ahead and say, hey, you know, this is the way we do it. This is the way I did it in the NFL. This is how I got to be a great player. And they'd listen to that quickly. And when you don't have that experience in the, uh, as playing, you, you come in, yourself. yeah, you got to prove yourself a little bit. Gotcha. But uh, after 42 years, some of them, some of them started believing. <laughs> <laughs> well, I wish I would have played for you. I like that. I like that. I, I think relating to the players is, is the whole key. And I always felt that way, even as a college coach, is relating to the players as people, as uh, you know, just as, as an individual first, and then as a ball player. Positive enthusiasm, positive goes so, such a long way. Um, as little negative as you could possibly get away with and positive, relate to the players, motivate them, enjoy what you're doing. Those kind of things is kind of what we always tried to do. Yeah, I appreciate that because most of the time, the, the coaches that you see that, that everybody pumps up are negative. They're screaming. They're doing all the things as a former player that I didn't like, but that's what you see all the time. I've saw positive and great things from you guys, so 
I appreciate that little advice. Yeah, what a coach is, is is not exactly the same as everybody thinks it is. You know, they do think coaches are a certain way. Uh, you really got to be yourself. You know, enthusiastic or whether you, you know mm -hmm. let that come over. You know, if you're uh, certainly uh, c committed to the game and and how it got you to where you were and how we got there. You know, by having success coaching. You know, that's that's what it takes. So. That's a great opportunity, league. It's not just an opportunity for us. It's an opportunity for these guys, camera yep. guys. It's an opportunity Everyone. for players. Mm -hmm. it's, it's everybody. It's a new league. It's a new, uh, a new exciting league, and, and it's involving a lot of people. So it, it, it's a really neat thing that way. Well, I know one thing. I won't be spitting on my players like Coach Cower <laughs> spitting yeah. on all the time. So I won't take that from Coach Cower. <laughs>one of the things too we're all getting used to is sharing facilities so hopefully wade won't be spying on us when we're out there practicing so like we're 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 uh you know the houston team and and our arlington renegades are sharing choctaw mm -hmm. stadium here and it's a great setup but you know so we're you know managing and then all you guys are we're sharing well, we're yeah sharing. we got four facilities right and, and two teams are at each facilities along with you know hotels some of them hotels and and whatnot and then going to games so yeah. I, I guess right we're going to yeah, be yeah. traveling on the same plane together. Admit, we're going to be sitting beside each other yeah. going to play. <laughs> hey man what's your yeah. game plan well yeah. yeah but having the hub yeah. actually is helpful good. you know for us right. you know being that we yes. share the stadium now we've Talk already practices. talked about having some practices together and just yeah to i think compete. that's that's the key yeah. thing is yeah. you get to work together which you know, every NFL team will tell you, and the ones I've been on, if you can work with another team, you know, it helps your team get better. Correct, correct. You, know? you, can, you can eval, too. You can yeah, it, instead yeah. of the preseason games, yes. you know, the, sure. yeah. you work together. Reduces you don't get your, reps, Yeah, too, right? you get reps, and you don't yeah. get anybody hurt, you yeah. know, because it's controlled. Yeah. But, yeah. but you get to work against each other. Yes. But I think yeah. even traveling, all of us on the same plane, all our guys are – we're all in the same boat. Mm -hmm. Players are all trying to make it to the NFL and want to put something positive on film. They're all good guys, you know, and everybody, you know, mature guys. It's just, you know, I, I don't foresee that being an issue whatsoever. Yeah. I you're think it be fun getting to know each other. You're training the same way. Everybody's right. getting the same opportunity. Mm -hmm. You're getting exactly. the same food. You're training. You're getting the same advice. And what's unique even for me, we're in training camp, but we're sitting here together. So you can still bounce ideas off each other. I, I, that is unique and, and pretty special. Yeah. yeah. We want fun, competitive games regardless. Yes. So that means the, the great thing is we're, we still have a home team. Yes. And we're playing in our stadium. Yeah. I'm playing in yeah. Houston. You play in yeah. San Antonio, yeah. Orlando. Yeah. He's right here in, the, in uh, Arlington. Yeah. So, I mean, that's the great thing about it. Yes. I mean. Yeah, that's a you positive. Know, that's a real positive that yeah. you got your own fans in your hometown, yeah. man. Yeah. Well, we're all under the same umbrella, so we're yeah. a family. But then, you know, we have our competitive days. Yeah, compete. And, yeah, sure. ready to compete, compete, you know, because well, that's, that's I, what I want more, yeah. Yeah. more than nothing than to beat these two guys. <laughs> yes. I, yeah, those it's those like days are circle. It's like I get to play Wayne. I get to play Steel. Yeah. I get to beat T-Buck. Uh, <laughs> we're all in the same division. Oh, man, I, I got to win one. I got to get one of these. Well, games. the 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 team that comes out of our division is going to win it all. So. Yes. <laughs> yeah. There you go. Right. And so once once I win it, we still oh. all with you two uh, golf round. Oh, okay. We got to get all together. Right. That's we we say, still huh? hadn't finished our golf round. Yeah. So. We ain't finished. Our team. We, we got to get that. Our team go do the talking. We supposed to have a match, like no, coaches. No, no, no. We no, talked no. about that. The tiebreaker gonna be this game when we beat our tail. That's what's gonna be. We done bad. We supposed to have a match. Coaches and coaches. No, man. You talking I want in that golf, golf match. Yeah, that's man. what I'm you talking about. We're going to get to the football. We'll get that yeah. golf. I'm saying after the season. I got it. I had some terrible news today, too. I got invited to play Augusta National two Ooh. days in April, and uh -oh. we got a game in D.C. Uh, <laughs> oh, <wow. laughs> well, so I had to let it go. Oh, yeah, it was heartbreaking. It'll yeah. come back around. I know. It'll come uh, yeah, it's it's got a good, great friend who yeah, I've been a few times. So. Okay, well, you got it. You know, getting this opportunity to be a head coach for me, just stepping into it, I didn't, you know kind of overwhelming.
because now you're not just doing the X's and O's. You have to basically become the CEO of the, of the whole franchise. You know, for us being a startup league, T Buck, we got to get the hotel rooms right, the, the <laughs> offices right. And I'm trying to go in and learn, be with the offensive staff and the defensive staff. Mm -hmm. I hadn't had time to do it because I'm putting out fires all over the place. Yes. And it's just that's probably the only thing I, I wasn't really prepared for is is having to answer to everybody and making sure managing okay. the chess board. Yes, yes, yes. It's yes, always yes. moving. Yes, it's no like question. every day is the draft board or, you know, the roster, mm -hmm. or the hotel room. Oh, we don't have the, 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 the PDA light. <laughs> you know, it's kind of sitting there. It's like, man, this is like I'm responsible for everything, you know, literally. But yeah, I you're also it. you're also responsible for those wins and losses. Yeah, correct. Well, say that scoreboard. <laughs> well, yeah. for me, coming from college, where I've been a coach for the last 15 years, it, I've kind of seen the recruiting trail and all that. So that was not uh, as as overwhelming for me. You know, I went in in college being the secondary coach because that's when you move up. You know, you go D coordinator and then head coach. By the time I sat down and actually got the contract. I was the corners coach. And when you just a corners coach, you get stuck. You get pigeonholed. You, you want great recruiter. Put guys in the NFL and all that, but that's that's all you are. And that's very tough. And that's why I'm very, very thankful for this league. And you said the opportunity where they saw past that. You talk ball, you understand. People don't realize when you are the corners coach, you have to know every facet of the defense. You could be run supporting one play. You out here tackling a, a guard in a 6'4", 220-pound receiver. Now you got the cat. You got a corner blitz. You got to come in. You might have to beat the guard. They get stuck and labeled as just a corner coach or the recruiter to me is, is uh, unfair. And it, it really bothered me because you do have dreams. You do have other ideals and thankful, blessed that our ownership went in and bought this and gave me personal the opportunity to be a head coach. And man, to be sitting here with you guys, I want a little tear coming up in my eyes. <laughs> it's, it's I appreciate been fun. that. It's yeah. been fun for me getting to know you guys and uh, and a new staff, putting together yes. a staff. I, I was, you know, you go around the room and you want to give a background on everybody, you know, yes. everyone tell your story. and. Heck, for all of you guys, I'm sure it's this way. Wade, you've done this for, for so long. And Tim Lewis has given his background. Old Steeler guy was yeah, a great, yeah, yeah. not old, but I mean a great player yeah, yeah. and longtime coach. And he, he went through the list of all, all his coaching stops. Mm -hmm. I said, you got to be 100 years old to coach that many places. <laughs> so point yeah. being, that's just an example of the guys, too, that we get to work with that, that are on our staffs have these great backgrounds as well. The question I had is for you two guys, like, why the XFL? I mean, you guys have had success in college. You've had success in the NFL and college. And, you know, you come from a football family mm -hmm. a background. Uh, why the XFL? Why? The, what made you want to coach in that? Well, that's what, that's what I do. Yeah. I mean, that's what I've always done. That's what I feel like I can do well. Uh, it's still an opportunity for me, you know, so. Uh, you know, having that great opportunity, just like you said, you get pigeonholed as, hey, you know, maybe I wasn't a great head coach in the league. Well, I was 82 and 64. No, so, I mean, it, it wasn't like, you know, they always think of me as, and I, I'm proud that I did well as a defensive coordinator. Yeah. It's an opportunity to be a head coach, and some people say, well, maybe he was a pretty good head coach. Well, if you 10 games with 500 right now in college, you might be making $10 million. That's right. <laughs> That's right. I mean, that is yeah. a great record as yeah. a head coach. Yeah. I tell you, for me, it's, um, I, I. And this was, guy, talk about a great record. Here yes. you go. Uh, I just, college, you know, but but I, I, I look forward to this, d the difference of not in college. I'm, I don't have anybody homesick. I don't have anybody mm -hmm. missing their girlfriend. I don't have to call mom and dad, you know, at night because Johnny's having trouble. We yeah. won't go to class, yeah, yeah. academic meetings and <laughs> compliance meetings. I, I get to coach just football because yeah. I always love coaching football. Right. So much of the other recruiting calls at 10 at night to the West Coast mm -hmm. or on and on and on. This is just football. And, right. and I, I really found that the last time I did this, you know, the in 2020, the guys love football. Oh, yeah. yes. These guys are yes. all guys that love football, so you don't have Oof. to 
could convince them to play hard, to, to go out and enjoy it. And so all of that, I really found great. I loved it. Uh, just coaching football, being on the field with players that love the game and not having all the other around it, you know, that, that I dealt with in college for so many years. And uh, so that part was really fun. And, and, and all the same thing, the coaches getting to know all of them, the assistant coaches, it was, it was great. Well, you mentioned getting to know, I, I, I tell you, when I take pictures with Coach Feller, with you and in Hines, we play golf, we do all that. <laughs> but my family was like, oh, you took a picture with Coach Stoops? Let me, let me see Coach Phil. Like, look, look at this. That, that to me is exciting too. I mean, you guys just don't know, just going back to that, I appreciate it. And I've enjoyed, really enjoyed the, the knowledge, the conversations. Uh, I remember the first time we met, I was telling my wife, guess who I sat by? It's like Coach Stoops. <laughs> And I hung out with Kofi. Oh, Kofi she didn't Wade, care. You know, yes, yeah, she cared. <laughs> you know, that's one of those things to me. And then to have to sit down and, and the conversation that we've had about everything from Hall of Fame. Mm -hmm. Is it the Hall of Fame? Is it numbers? Or is it is a it, uh, popularity contest? Well, we're on TV now. Maybe we're going to Hall of Fame. Who knows? <laughs> <laughs> Who knows? Right? Who knows numbers right? don't lie. <laughs> Championship. So I really appreciate all the stuff that's happened for me knowledge, wisdom-wise, uh, just watching you guys. I, I'm looking forward to being on the other, being a head coach and looking over, seeing the, the two yes. godfathers. It's like, damn, I'm going against Stoops. What, what <laughs> I'm going against Wade. Yeah. I'll be yeah, 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 like, like, I'm alone, like, like, like I've been there like, for like, a while. Making up stuff to talk about <laughs> like they do. But, Come on, you guys but, have been in a million games. Well, yeah. Yeah. The one thing I appreciate, you guys always yeah. been like, giving cool. us great advice, yes. you know, just embracing us, not really judging us, oh, you're first year guys, you never, you know, you're not even on our level, but more of just saying, hey, welcoming us, any advice, I know Wade, you've always yes. gave me your number, say, hey man, if you have any questions, please, you know, you hesitate. To, so the fact that you guys open your arms and embrace us being the first year guys. Well, the guys, thing, the thing that you guys will get that we've had and had uh, and loved coaching is being a head coach you get to have these kind of relationships yeah, with the players yeah, yeah. you know yeah. i mean jj watt just retired and yes you know and i got feedback from him i yeah. mean and and just knowing you i mean we, we've known each other for a long time yeah, and back yeah. and forth and had respect for each yeah, other right. well i get that as a coach i never was a great player yeah. like you <laughs> or a great player yeah, like yeah, you yeah, yeah. so you you know, you vicariously get to play through through yes, the players, sir, sir. and you get to know them as human beings mm -hmm. and adults. Right. You know, because you treat them that way. Yes. You right. know, so it, it it it's a great opportunity for yeah. for me to get back in that. I mean, I've had so much fun through the players, being excited about playing and practice, learning to practice mm -hmm. hard, and and also the players on the other team that you get to know. Yes. Yeah. You know, I, and that's you know, what I think. For me, some of my closest relationships were with my coaches. Yes. You know, oh, yeah. But I spent more time with my coaches mm -hmm. than I did my own family. Mm -hmm. You know. That's right. It's like for coach, they were kind of the father figure, the mentor. You know, anything that I had going on in my life, and you know, uh, trials and tribulation, I went to my coaches because they saw mm -hmm. me each and every day. They knew who mm -hmm. I was. So. Uh, for me, not being close to my father, I always look for my head coaches to kind of fill that void sure. uh, to be there. So I've been very blessed, you know, with Coach Tomlin, Mike Tomlin, and, and Coach Bill Cower that they were always there and, and open up their door if I ever needed anything. So I was always fond of my relationship with, with, with my coaches. Let me ask you guys this. I don't know, putting together this draft, building this league up, from the ground up, not having a player. To me, it was ex very, very exciting because I always wanted to do that. And I had fun, I was heavily involved. For some coaches, probably uh, my assistant coach, they probably felt like too much. How did you guys feel about it? I mean, I, I was pumped to be able to go through the 5,000 players that was on yeah. the list and figure out how am I gonna put this together? Or what you know, my vision and does it match with the other coaches? I found it was, uh, you're, you're amazed at how many great football players yes. are out. Uh, are yeah. Really good football players right. that are on the outskirts of the NFL right. that are those last, you know, you take the last five, six guys cut from every team, you guys know those are really good mm -hmm. football players. Mm -hmm. right. So, you know, when you start looking at them all, you know, you, 
you have to trust your assistant coaches of what they're looking for. What I found was how many really good football players mm-hmm. are, are, are out there available and, yeah. and, and we're going to give them this opportunity, yes. which is exciting for them and for us. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And that's the thing, I, I think more than anything, uh, the talent. There's so many talented players that ended up out there that's not in the league. And for whatever reason, they need a league like the XFL mm-hmm. to get that extra experience. Mm-hmm. They they need to understand what it what it takes to be a professional athlete. You know, a sharpening your your tools, uh, working on your craft to get better each and every day. It's really just understanding how to be a pro, and that's the challenge that yes. I like. I you know to tell them, hey, you can't just show up and think that you're just gonna play ball. It don't work like that. You know, right. to get to the next level. You got to invest and be all in from what you eat, what you put in your body to get proper rest, to putting in the playbook. You know, a lot of these young generation, they pick up the phone when they wake up and they're on the phone to two, three o'clock sleep, on the phone, sleep with right? Their phone. You know, I'm trying to trade the last. phone and, 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 yeah. and to playbook. To well, at least that give that me attitude that. you're talking about, everybody said they blessed and they thankful. What I always find them is how long is that going to last? Yeah. And just before we change subject, I want to say, when, when you guys were draft guys we, on, that I had on my list, you know, you think like, okay, dang, they might not know about this. And when you guys draft guys on my list, I, I got excited. Like, man, I, okay, I got a good eye. Yeah. If they saw that, I know <laughs> he was like a diamond in the rough. Yeah. And it's like, nah. Like, you, you draft a couple guys right off the rip that I had on my list. I was like, oh, my gosh, I got a good eye. There you go. Wade is drafted. I know what I'm talking about. <laughs> so that was exciting. Yeah. 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 Not you know not only we have opportunities, and a lot of other people have opportunities. It's still about the players. You know, a lot of these guys, um, and, and we've seen it. A, a lot of these guys, and even in the league before, before uh, had players that ended up playing and starting in the NFL. You know, we're talking about guys getting an opportunity to live out their dreams. That's what we're doing. That's that's what's happening. Yeah. Because these guys are sometimes passed over, you know, and you don't want to see that. And coaching, you don't want to see it. You don't want to see it in, as a player either. And some of them take, especially old linemen, guys take a little bit longer sometimes mm-hmm. to learn their craft, like you say, mm-hmm. and they get the opportunity to do that and then step into the NFL. And a couple of guys I had on my roster had the opportunity to get mm-hmm. elevated and to go to practice squad. So you see that the talent's there. Now it's just how do you get over that hump to, to actually make a roster and stay there for the long haul? I think at the end of the day, that's what we all want in our mm-hmm. players is to eventually develop them, give them all the tools that they need to, to, to make it and be able to fulfill their dreams that they've always had, and that's to play in the NFL. So. For us, I embrace being in the XFL because I look at it as we're developing guys for the league. Absolutely. You know, we're trying our best to get them to a position to where they can have longevity in the league and be able to make all the money that they want to be able to provide for their families and also get an opportunity to play for an NFL championship. I, I, you hit it. Developmental, uh, developing, shining light. Uh, helping the players, I, I say, reach their potential. If that potential is to go to the next level, here's the opportunity for that. And, and you're surrounded by great coaches. I, Absolutely. What I really like is the coaching staffs that we've put together, teachers, mentors. So if you can't get it done here, uh, which is, I know you're not going to get it done up there, but I think that's the biggest thing that I really appreciate and like about what we're doing here in the XFL and what it stands for. And we're providing 10, 10 straight games, 10 weeks yes. of film. Yes. You know the NFL <laughs> GMs are going to be Correct. watching their coaches. That's GMs. how you evaluate, right? There, there are some evaluations. Yeah. So they get to put 10 games of film out yeah. there for every NFL team. And like I, we were talking earlier, I mean, you, you think of the last 10 guys cut from 32 NFL football teams. That's a lot of good football correct, players correct, that are on correct. the cusp of making it. Correct, correct. And just weren't in the right situation at the right time. Well, they get to go broadcast it to the world right here, mm-hmm. how good they are. And and a lot of them will get opportunities to move up and go to the NFL. Yes. And not to take anything away from the other leagues, I just look at our league as far as the timing purposes, because we start right after the Super Bowl. You know, mm-hmm. fans, they want mm-hmm. more football. Well, we're going to provide that for them, not only for the fans, 
but the time and purpose of when we start and when our season ends, that's a no brainer for, for a player that wants to play in the XFL. You know, you get the opportunity to put, like you say, 10 games on tape uh, to get evaluated, but then the season ends towards the end of April, and that's right when the, the, the NFL draft starts. So you have a legitimate chance of actually going, if you get picked up by an NFL team, learning their playbook, learning how they go, and then you going into NFL camps, now you understand the playbook, so it gives you a legitimate chance of making the roster. So that's what I love about what the XFL can provide. The rules. Yeah. I mean, all you sit there and you watch college on Saturday, you watch NFL on Sunday, and we sit there and complain about the rules, like the overtime, which we have an old time rule that is not going to end in a tie. You know, to create the rules that we have that everybody's on everybody's mind, fresh on their minds, to give everybody the opportunity to see that, I think is is important too. Yeah. What what rules that we're gonna implement that you like? I, I know I like from the offside kick to to the fourth and fifteen rule, where right. you have the option in the fourth quarter to go for the uh onside or fourth and fifteen. I think that's that's pretty How about nice. the kickoff. Yes. 97, 97% of them are returned mm -hmm. in the XFL, 37% in the NFL. I mean, you watch the NFL game and all of a sudden they're going to kick off. Well, I'll go, yeah. I'll go get a Coke or something because yeah. they're going to be on, they're going to yeah. kick it out of the yeah. end zone every time. And you know? there's going to be a commercial before. Yeah, and after. right. It's yeah. going to be that. So, yeah. The, but the, I think the, the main point is also player safety. Yeah. You know, you know to be able to have rules, to be able to, have uh, to protect the players. I've always been an advocate of, you know, we all know we play the game. For real, it's a huh? rough game. Listen, it is. I like. I probably couldn't play now. But that was in so. the rules, though. Yeah, you within the rules. Just, I stayed yeah, within the I rules. Know, now the rules right. have changed. That, yeah, it was. Listen, I, the fact that mm. we're being creative, yes. innovative, absolutely. As far as, far as yeah. you know, changing the game up to one provide player safety, um, we're all a part of that. We want mm. our players to make absolutely. sure we're safety, but also. Uh, to provide rules to make it exciting, make the game exciting. It may be different, so you may have some naysayers like, I don't know if I like that, but you got to understand what went into changing the rules, changing the kickoff rules. Mm -hmm. A lot of it went through, you know, being uh, providing the safety for our players. Yes. And, and it's exciting to experiment with yeah. it. Like, correct. I don't correct. think there's much more boring than watching an extra point kick. Correct, it, correct. Right? <laughs> so now you, you, you get, you know, you get one point going yeah, yeah, from yeah. From the uh, two, yeah. two points yeah. from the five, yeah. three points from the ten. Yeah. So that Since changes the nine, the nine point lead. Is that yeah. being said, that's you done. guys have the little cards. Oh, we got the cards. Yeah. You throw it out the window. You can throw that out yes. of the way, right? Yeah. Yes. Yeah, we got, you got to get a new card. You got a new big card. Yeah. yeah. One of my favorites, I don't know y'all, is is the punt return where you can't leave until the ball is kicked. Yeah. Which I think, as Boy, a yeah, former punt like, returner, like that. I would really love that. Yeah. I bring you want you want the ten yards? Yeah. Oh, yeah. oh go man, ten yards, yeah. and now you can. I would tell the guys, if you can't block, them, don't block them in the back. Don't yeah. chase them. Correct. Get out, get off the field so I can see. Yeah. Or let the first two go. Have a rule: if the punt returner cannot make two guys miss, right. he shouldn't be a punt returner. Hey, there you go. I appreciate get that. Get off the field. Tea, yeah, I, I appreciate you giving me that. I had that in my playbook. I don't know if that's that's one of the things I'm excited about yeah. to see. And and on the kickoff kickoff return, they're only five yards apart. Yeah. So you get you taking the collisions out. Correct. Yeah. And right. now who can sustain blocks? Who can get off blocks? Yeah. Move your feet. I mean, you know, yes. Yeah. That's but a slide. Yeah, that's right. That's right. But who can complain about that? So, I mean, I, I think all the rules, I mean, I, I love all the rules because yeah. of player safety, but at the same time, it's going to bring some exciting uh, game play on the field. To keep well, the kickoff return oh. comes you back. You never know. You can't miss it. Somebody Power returns score. come back, yeah, you know. Yeah, so, yeah. Yeah. What about the golden challenge? I know you guys. I, I've never experienced that, that one challenge that we get of anything, any time of the game. How how do you guys feel? Are you excited about that? How do you feel about that? Well, the, the league, uh, I mean, they're going to they're gonna be in the calls in the first place, which is going to be better. I, th I know it's going to be better, if, uh, you know, so Dean Blandino will have a lot, can oversee the calls, whether they should be called or not called. I think that's a key thing because they can do it by instant replay and, and 
do it in slow motion and they get it right. So they're going to get those things right. Uh, I don't know that you're going to have to have much of a challenge. I mean, yeah. the thing where you're throwing red <laughs> flags out and they're deciding this and that, it's not going to happen in our league. Right. And I think it'd be a lot smoother. Yeah, I've never had to deal with it at college. They review everything just yes. as yeah. they're going to do. Like right. Wade was just saying, they're going to do that in our league that you, all you got to do is slow it down a little bit. They've, they're looking at it, yeah. you know, so they'll, I just never felt the need that you had mm -hmm. to. I guess on occasion, I felt something was wrong. I'd call a timeout mm -hmm. right. and make sure they looked at it further, you know. Yeah, yeah. I was going to be a lot smoother, I yeah. believe. question like you guys have teams already established from XFL 2.0 being in Dallas and Houston or Arlington in Houston what do you, what advice would you have for T Buck and I being the new kids on the block <laughs> going into our respective cities year one you know what advice would you give to your fan base or what advice do you have for us being that we're going into the season year one as the new kids on the block in this league? Well, I think everybody's going to be excited. I mean, you know, they're, they're certainly going to be excited to, to have Arlington back again, you know. But, and I think Houston's a real strong, and uh, San Antonio, you know, Listen. us, ju the rivalries and uh, the Texas teams are going to be big no matter what. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. We and still got our cigars, right? And then Orlando's in, in way <laughs> east Texas. Yeah, 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 yeah. Way yeah. east Texas. Y'all are in east Texas out there. So, <laughs> so, uh, so, so, that's so good. what yeah. we already have, we got the Texas State Championship. Bet yeah, y'all can have that. I what? just want the XFL championship. <laughs> yeah, I, I, got it. I want yeah. the big trophy. Well, it's you know. gonna be good. Listen, I love everything about San Antonio. When it was presented oh, to yeah. me to have the opportunity, I looked at it as, you know, even though it's a big city, it has a small town vibe to it. And it just reminded me so much of Pittsburgh, not just the colors. Everybody's like, oh, no wonder yeah, you're saying yeah. the colors. <laughs> mm -hmm. But I just thought like the fans that we have, they crave sports. Like mm -hmm. they're, they're, craving a professional football team in San Antonio because, sure. you know, they don't have Dallas Cowboys or the Texans. They don't have anything. So I was super excited to just, you know, uh, be the head coach and, uh, of San Antonio Brahmas and be able to bring football to the city. I'm, I'm super excited and looking forward to it. I think yeah. what you do is just get out in the community and be visible as much as you can, gotcha. invite people to practice, gotcha. high school teams to practice, yeah. whatever. and. You know, as much as anything, I think we all want to be a, a positive in our communities, correct, you know, correct. getting the players out and want to be, you know, you want to be looked at that way. And I think the more you can get out and see people and be around them, the better and, sure. and invite them in. And I know the Arlington people here are incredible uh, with our team and they were the last time and really embraced us. And it's it's a great community. Gotcha. So I, and you guys are all in great communities. So gotcha. I think just getting out yeah. there in front of people, they'll they'll start to embrace you. And I think Orlando is the same. We're talking about it's new, it's fresh. The Camping World Stadium is unbelievable. The adjustments they made. The fans are knowledgeable and excited about professional football. You know, you have Tampa that's down the road. Miami is down the road. They don't have anything there uh, that is remotely close to what we're going to bring. And I think that's exciting for not only us, but the fans and to get you guys to come into town, that just gonna add it to it. You have Disney around the corner, so we have to bring some type of entertainment there. <laughs> and that's where you guys come. Got Mickey Mouse down there. Yes, Canada. yes. Love it. Well, I'm, I'm, I'm happy to be a part of this. And yes. being here with you guys has been, it's, it's, it's pretty nice. Yeah, yeah, it'll be great. We see each other twice. Yes. You know, yeah. We play each other twice, home yes. and home. So that's, that's. You know what's going to be exciting is just, just the, with the game planning and seeing what you guys put out there and seeing for us, new, you know, how we match it. Can we match it? And that to me is Yeah, how do y'all game also. plan us? Y'all never, y'all yeah. don't know what we got up for our shoes. Yeah. Well, y'all ain't worried about that. Be, re be ready for the do. blitz. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we already know that. Yeah, we yeah. already yeah. know that. <laughs> We are, got, we're working on that I day got, one. Hey, man, little, slide. Uh, what are we doing over here? I have a little reputation. All those, <laughs> all those play callers have a background. You're right. Yeah. You're right. You're right. You're right. You're right. You're right. And you can't hide you're, from you're, it. Yeah. Right. You're right. Yeah. yeah, especially that fourth quarter. Yeah. yeah. When it's on I the think line. middle of the year, we play back-to-back. 
We play or you is guys. It, yeah. it's, it, okay, yeah, that's yeah, what yeah. it is. Yeah, Two weeks in a row. Right. So yeah, that'll be different game oh, planning. Yeah. Correct. Like a little playoff mm-hmm. game. That's yeah. happened. I've had that in the NFL. I have times. too, yeah. Maybe. Yeah, we played played uh, with the Oilers. We played Pittsburgh back-to-back. And, and uh, uh, Bradshaw got hurt the first game. Uh-huh. A week later, in fact, Tony Dungy played quarterback really? in the fourth quarter. <laughs> How about yeah. that? Yeah, and we blitz, We did blitz him when he got in there. <laughs> you would We're blitz the backup quarterback. <laughs> Bradshaw <laughs> broke his thumb in, in the game, and so the second guy went in. And then third, and then Tony was a, you know, the emergency guy, and and uh, he ended up playing quarterback. Right. We played him the next week, and Bradshaw got a cast on his hand and throwing it. Right. <laughs> See, and that's that's what I love about you guys. The, yeah. the storytelling of, of just the history of the game and all the, the great mm-hmm. players that you guys coach and been around. I, I, I'm i like a little kid at Christmas time waiting, waiting to hear all the stories that, that this way has taught, yes. you know, told me over the years, man. But I'm super excited to be a part of it. I look forward to, to playing against you guys and, and really just want to say thank you guys for, like I say, embracing us first year guys. Yes. You know, and helping us with whatever we need, man. That's just awesome. Well, and being who you are. Yes, correct. You guys, I mean, all the coaches, including, I mean, it's been super, super nice. Yep. Super good people. Yes. Yeah. Fun to be around. Yeah. And we got we got an agreement, right? Best record gets a box of cigars yep, from, there it is, from right? the other see. guy. Huh? It's good. Yeah. You know, we got it. We got. We didn't want to. We didn't want. We didn't want to. Right. Right. want to just knock you out of it. But you know, we 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 had a state title here, but we still got the Yeah, we'll do the big t- Yeah, y'all, y'all, y'all umbrella, do the yeah. state, right. man. We, right. we, we, I'll take care of that. <laughs> we'll take care of that. We'll take care of that. Now, I, we all want to win, you know, yes. want to win, right? You want to be the champ. You want to win your division. You you, you want to win. But outside of that, what are, what are some key parts, to, you know, what, what would define success for you? you know, in this first year in the XFL, even if your, your record isn't what you quite want it to be, what would be a positive from it? Well, coaches, coaches are, their head coaches are always judged on their record, you know, from the outside. But it's really, like it's been said before, this, this is a people business. It's about, life is about people. Mm-hmm. Football is really about people and relationships that you have with the players. And if you can get if you can get a guy if you can get your players to play better, to be a better person, also, I mean we we influence guys to, uh, that way as much as football wise. Correct. You know you know from the coaches you've had, you know they influence you that way, Correct. and we have a chance to do that. And it's a neat thing to be able to to have that kind of relationship. You're going to lose some games, you're going to win some games, but having a family feeling. Uh, when you when it's all over, because families have wins and losses. When it's all over, you have that kind of relationship right. with your players. Yeah, and I think you know me going into this process, my whole mindset has just been developing champion, right? Not just being a champion on the field, but being a champion off the field. You know, make championship decisions. Uh, you know, uh, everything that you do, let's do it at championship level. You know, from being a a husband or a father or a son, you know, I, I think I've always been a big component of if you get the player right, then everything else falls into place. And if I can help tell some stories of the mistakes that, that we made during our playing day that we can help impact a player, then then my purpose of, of being a head coach is done. Like, you know, to be able to uh, help a kid in life make the right decision uh, not only for himself, but for his family, uh, as well as teaching him the game of football and giving him the, the tools that he need to make it to, to the next level. That's what I'm really, I'm invested all in, in, in that aspect. Not just winning the championship, but you know, trying to make a championship person. Uh, you guys just said, I, I think the biggest the influence or the impact that you, that you can have on somebody's lives from, from you know, take me coming from a, a small town, Mississippi, and, and going to Florida State and watching, you know, watching Dion do what he did and watching, learning from Coach Bow. When it's going great, what type of person are you? When it's going bad, what type of person are you? 
And I know the young man's gonna be watching us, and they're watching me from how you dress to how, how respectful are you to other people. Just to me, the total attitude, the total person. Uh, even on game day, it's, it's okay, can I move the needle with somebody? Can I get them to improve a little bit? Whether the mindset, the attitude, you know, how they think. And I think all of us has played football. We've been in football for a long time. One of the biggest things I want to do is, is, is get across to young men, make football a part of your life not your life. Add it to what you're doing. So when football is over, you don't think your life is over. You don't think you have anything else to do. I've seen that so many times where, where guys are not playing ball and it's like, well, I don't know what else to do. And it breaks my heart. You know, sure. one, my thing I tell the guys, if the only thing they put on my tombstone is he was a great football player, I would, I would be so disappointed in myself. I mean, I would probably be rolling over in my crying <laughs> because yeah. I feel like obviously life is more than that. Right. And, and right. my job, I feel like, is to show that, to have those conversations and not just talk about it, but show it the way I live too. I think too, just uh, I think we'd all feel successful if we had a handful of players from every team goes on to the NFL and gets another opportunity. Mm -hmm. You know, whether they make it or not, they're in the camp, they got another chance at it. And I think we'd all, you know, if I hope my best players, that happens to them when they're not back the next year. Because mm -hmm. they're they're on a team somewhere and we got to replace them. But that would be a that would be a good thing. I think we'd yes. all embrace. Yes. Now I'm worried about these two guys. Because <laughs> I think they're gonna be pretty good head coaches. Yeah, no <laughs> <doubt. That's laughs> you what? can tell the way they talk. Right? Yeah. That's, that's the right attitude. No doubt. You know, I think for you guys, with all the years you guys had, I mean, at some point we all have a story. Mm -hmm. And I think that's what resonates with these players. Like, you know, our whole life, somebody told us what we can't do. You know, I, I wasn't supposed to play in the league. I wasn't supposed to even go to college. You know, now us being first year head coaches, we can't be that. So it was always going to be the naysayers and the doubters, you know, away, you can't be a head coach or Bob, you can't, you can't coach at a professional because you've done it, you know. Oh, you're yeah. just going to be the Conan's coach. Yeah. That's all I yeah. go Correct. get. Correct. What, what Coach Park says is say. Correct. If, I, if I'm going to go shopping, at least give me an opportunity to cook the food, right? <laughs> if I'm going to go shop for the grocery, let me, let me cook the grocery. That's how I feel. Yeah, but I think the players resonate because their whole lives, you know, they their, their path of trying to get to where they want to go there's been some adversities. There's been tons of naysayers and people telling them that they can't make it to the next level. So the fact that we get a, a at least a handful of guys that, that have a huge chip on their shoulders, I mean, we're right there in the same boat. So oh, yeah. I, I, I embrace that. I, I look forward to me. So like you said, we're playing through the players. Like That's we right. all got something to prove ourselves, not only just the players, but coaches and everybody's involved. So that's what I, I, I love about this opportunity. I thought that, again, going back, I think the big thing is them understanding this is opportunity, make the best of it, but make it a part of your life. I think our job is to, for them to see that there is life and you can be very, very successful after football. I think if you have that mindset, you play harder. Mm -hmm. I play one of the, should be a, in the Hall of Fame, Zach Thomas, who obviously didn't need to play, if you know his background, but he, Nobody play hard. If you have that mindset, I can do something else besides that. I've heard coaches say, oh, they, they don't love it. They don't love it. Okay, cool, well, why don't love it? Well, you ain't running through that brick wall out there. <laughs> uh, would you run through that brick wall? <laughs> I don't think so. But if you have something, you know you have something, I think you play even harder because you, you respect it and it's something you truly want to do. But I'm super excited. I, I, listen, I'm competitive as crap. I want to beat the crap out of all you guys. Yes. Oh, yeah. yeah. We all want to win, but 
Uh, We'd well, be disappointed man. if you weren't. Yes, yes. <laughs> yes. Trying to yes. nothing less yeah. out of me. Huh? <laughs> but no, it's, it's just a blessing, man. I'm extremely. And you gonna be smiling the whole time. All when you're day to long, down. all day. I'm be we're gonna cheesing. Take, we're gonna just, take that smile off your face. Never, you can never no, take that. Never, 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 never gonna take that. But no, man, I look forward to. It. I know you guys are extremely super mm -hmm. competitive. It's gonna be fun. I just I want to embrace this opportunity, man, and, and really just thank all of you guys for. Uh, helping me in my career and my growth and, you know, being a, a first time head coach. But at the same time, I mean, we got to want to we want to win this thing. Yes. So. Well, I want to say this right now. Uh, I'm going to invite all you guys down for the parade. <laughs> oh, oh. For the cool. parade. For the parade. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll win the championship. Uh, yeah. okay. the season. Come on down so, to the river walk. Down in come on Santa down Park. and let's, let's have a great time and, and truly embrace one another because we, we have been competitive. But overall, I appreciate the energy. I appreciate the attitude. Uh, just the love that I've gotten from you guys. And I think we can, we have the ability and I think we will show like you can be just as competitive with respect for oh, yeah. one another. So let's go. I appreciate yeah, you. Yeah, baby. All right, let's do it. Got it. All right. Appreciate you guys. All the way. Yes. Boom.